स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so the first example that i have is the following so given so i am given the following plant condition let me say my plant condition is as follows so x1 dot is equal to x2 and x2 dot the dot represents the time derivative is equal to x1 uh, well is equal to u uh, u is a function of t and and my performance index is given by j j is equal to integral t0 to tf uh, times half uh, u square dt and then uh, we need to find we need to find the optimal the optimal control and the optimal state right so basically we need to find u and x x is a vector in this case notice that this is a case where the cost function is set equal to 0 so we will follow the step by step procedure namely the pontryagin procedure so step 1 is we we set up the hamiltonian uh, so my hamiltonian h is v plus lambda times f or this is also equal to half uh, half u square so that's my v plus lambda so now notice that we have a set of two two equations in the plant condition so lambda takes a vector form so i get lambda 1 times x2 plus lambda 2 times u right and then uh, so then the step 2 is find u star so find u star and we do that by differentiating h with respect to u set it equal to 0 and after we do that we see that u star becomes this is minus lambda 2 right we differentiate we get the following relation and then we plug it back to get our optimal hamiltonian where u is removed from this equation so step 3 is step 3 is find so my optimal hamiltonian which is now a function of x x1 star x2 star lambda 1 star lambda 2 star so u is completely out of the picture and we see that this is also equal to after plugging in u is half lambda 2 star square plus lambda 1 star x2 star minus lambda 2 star square okay uh, after we simplify i get that this is lambda 1 star x2 star minus lambda 2 star by 2 okay and then i see that my my so i have to set up my 2n equations or my 2n hamilton's equation obtain obtain state and co state equations i see the following so x1 dot star is partial h partial lambda 1 and i differentiate i get that this is x2 star and then my x2 dot star is partial h partial lambda 2 so that gives me minus lambda lambda 2 star and then i see that lambda 1 dot star is minus h minus x 1 at star when we differentiate with respect to x1 we do not have an x1 in the expression i get that this is equal to 0 and lambda 2 dot star is equal to minus h minus x 2 at start condition and i get equal to minus lambda 1 okay so then well so i have uh, i have four equations and i have four unknowns x1 x2 lambda 1 lambda 2 so uh, i can slowly start solving notice the third equation can be quickly solved so let me so i see that lambda 1 star is c3 a constant because lambda 1 dot is 0 and lambda 2 lambda 2 star dot is minus lambda 1 so 
So, lambda 2 star is the integral of minus lambda 1 will give me minus c 3 t plus c 4. So, I am just using a set of constants here and then my x 2 star is minus lambda x 2 star dot is minus lambda 2. So, then my x 2 star will be integral of uh, minus lambda 2 star which comes out to be uh, which comes out to be c 3 t square minus uh, minus c 4 t plus c 2 and finally, my x 1 uh, star my x 1 star is the integral of x 2 from equation number 1 and x 2 star and I see that this is also c 3 t cube by 6 minus c 4 t square by 2 plus c 2 t plus c 1 and now I have a set of 4 unknowns c 1 to c 4 and we also have we have to see whether we have 4 equations to solve for 4 unknowns. Notice that uh, in this problem uh, we are given the following well I have also specified some boundary conditions. So, my boundary conditions are x bar 0 is 1 2 and my x bar 2 is 1 0. So, essentially I have specified fixed boundary condition. So, these are a set of vector equation vector boundary conditions of two constraints each. So, essentially we have four boundary conditions and we have four unknowns right. So, found so in order to find this use our x boundary condition x bar of t 0 and x bar of t f right and we will find these these constants right. So, I leave those evaluation of the constants to the students and look at another quick example. So, in the second example I am going to repeat my repeat my first example repeat example 1, but this time with the following boundary condition with boundary condition as follows. So, I just want to highlight the solution method uh, with the different cases that we have. So, the, the boundary conditions are x 0 is 1 0 and then x 1 at 2 is 0 and x 2 at 2 is free. So, it is a freely moving uh, state variable notice that my initial and the final time are 0 and 2. So, those are fixed however, my final state x 2 is free. So, this is a case of fixed final time, but free final state. So, this means that we need to use we need to use case c in our case c of our uh, of our simplified simplif simplified uh, boundary condition case ok. Let us go back a few slides our case 3 our case c is the following free final state fixed final time. So, all we need to do is replace one of the condition the free uh, the, the fixed boundary condition with this particular condition partial s partial x is equal to lambda ok. So, so what we have done is so at at t equal to t f I have an condition lambda 2 star uh, at t f is equal to partial partial s partial x at t f right. However, it is only the second variable which is free the second state variable and hence this is partial s partial x 2 only the second variable is free right. But, but also the fact is that s our cost function is identically 0 right. So, I get that this constraint is set equal to 0. So, I have my following boundary conditions. So, my boundary conditions are as follows. So, at t equal to 0 I have x of x 1 of 0 is 1 x 2 of 0 is 2 and x 1 of 2 is 0 and finally, my x 2 at uh, so instead of x 2 I, I replace this boundary condition by my fourth boundary condition is replaced by the fact that lambda 2 at start condition is 0 right. 
So, so these are my four conditions to satisfy and of course, we do the same solution method we will get an equation we will get a solution in terms of four constants which are then resolved using these four uh, uh, conditions. Let us look at one more example. I am going to repeat my example 1, but with the following boundary condition. So, again in my third example I repeat I repeat my example 2 with the following boundary condition uh, x x 0 is is 1 2. So, this is a vector setup and x 1 at 2 is equal to 0 x 1 at t f is equal to 3 and x 2 at t f is free. Okay. Notice that I have uh, well. So, notice that my second state variable at final time point is free and also my final time point t f is also not known. So, we do not know whether it is 2 or whether it is less than 2 or greater than 2. right? So, so what we have is so, we have T f is unknown in this problem. So, T f is unknown and also x 2 at T f, T f is free. right? So, which means that since T f is unknown T f can very well be a variable to the system. So, in which means that the variation in T f is also non-zero and the variation in x 2 is also non-zero which means that we have this this situation falls under our simplified case E where we are able to vary our final time as well as our final state independent of each other. right? So, this falls under case E and we see that uh, the following set of natural boundary condition must hold. So, I have the following. So, H uh, plus partial S partial t at t f set equal to 0 and uh, and well my s is 0. So, that we will plug later and second uh, second uh, I also have that lambda the lambda 2 the second state variable. So, lambda 2 is partial s partial x x 2 is set equal to 0 this is under start condition at t f right. However, my well, so this is the condition. However, my s, my s is identically zero, the cost function so far, right? So which means that lambda two is zero, and this very uh, this derivative is also zero, right? So now I have two conditions coming from so so these two will give me will give me two conditions, right? And I also have two boundary conditions coming at t equal to zero. Right, and I have also specified another condition at two, x one at two. So, so I have five, I have five conditions. So this question is, do we have five unknowns? And the answer is yes. We have, we have x one, we have x two, we have lambda one, and we have lambda two. And the students can see that the fifth variable is the time point, final time point T f, which is also the unknown of the problem. So, 5 unknowns, 5 conditions the problem should be fully defined. Okay, then uh, let me finally look at one more example uh, of the same, uh, same example, but with a different cost function. Okay, so, in my final example let me, let me repeat. So, I am continuing to repeat my example 1 or example 2 as it is but with changed with changed performance index okay so my my objective function or performance index is as follows so j is one half of x1 of 2 minus uh, minus 4 square plus one half of x2 at 2 minus 2 square plus plus integral from 0 to 2 u square by 2 d t right. And my boundary conditions are x 0 is 1 2 the same set of boundary condition and 
uh, the state variable at 2 the final time point is free ok. So, both the variables are free now. So, which means which means we have notice that this is the quantity which is sitting outside the integral is s at t f right. So, I now have a cost function s at t which is also equal to half uh, x 1 at t minus 4 square plus half uh, x 2 at t minus 2 square right. So, these are my these are my cost functions and what else. So, now again we use the same solution methodology, but now I have a cost function and notice that we have two boundary conditions here two boundary conditions and also I will get two natural boundary conditions natural boundary conditions from from my from my free boundary and of course, I have four variables. So, four variables which are my x 1 x 2 and my lambda 1 lambda 2 my final time point 2 is known and so that should fully determine our system and this is a system where we have fixed time, but free state and that is our case c right. So, so this is the case this is the case c of simplified simplified uh, simplified boundary conditions. So, so I hope so now so let me just wrap up this lecture by mentioning I hope that all the students have been able to get a feeling of how to solve uh, the problems involving uh, optimal controls and in the next lecture I am going to introduce another method to solve this optimal control problems namely via the Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation and we are going to state the optimality criteria followed by we will look at certain methods of constraint optimization namely the method of penalty function and slack variables. Thank you for listening, thank you very much.